and a very warm welcome to our service for Sunday the 22nd of November. Today's service continues our theme of exploring the book of Ruth, focusing on book three. Let's begin with a prayer. Let's pray. O Lord our God, we gather today to give you thanks and praise for your greatness. We praise your mighty works for the whole world. We praise you for your wonderful deeds your power is limitless, your wisdom unparalleled, your grace is overwhelming, your love is never failing. Amen. We now say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now begin with our first hymn, In Christ Alone. <laughs>
Ellen Peter Swindale will now bring us our Bible reading. Ruth, chapter 3, adapted from The Voice. Naomi said to Ruth, My child, it is my responsibility to find a husband and place of rest for you, a place where you will find rest and contentment. You have been working alongside the young women who serve Boaz. Is he not part of your family? Early this evening, during the late afternoon wind, he will be on the threshing floor winnowing the barley. Bathe and perfume yourself. Put on your best dress, then go down onto the threshing floor. Be careful, though. Don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. Once he is relaxed, he will lie down to sleep. Make sure you notice where he is. Once he has lain down, go to him. Uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. And Ruth replied, I will do everything you have told me to do. So she went down to the threshing floor and followed through with everything her mother-in-law told her to do. Not much later, Boaz finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits. He made his way to the end of a pile of grain and lay down there to sleep. Then, very quietly, Ruth sneaked to where he was lying down. She uncovered his feet and lay down at his feet. Later, sometime in the middle of night, Boaz was startled and woke up. When he rolled over and looked round, he discovered there was a woman lying at his feet. And Boaz asked, Who are you? I am your servant Ruth. Spread out the hem of your garment so that it covers your servant. You are a near relative of our family. May the Eternal bless you, my daughter, for the loyal love you are showing now is even greater than what you showed before. You have not pursued a younger man, either a rich one or a poor one. You may rest easy. You have nothing to fear, my child. I will do everything you ask. Everyone in this city agrees you are a woman of virtuous character. You are right that I am in line as a near relative of your family. But I am not the only one, nor the most likely. There is another man who is more closely related to you than I am. Spend the rest of the night here. In the morning I will give him the chance to act as your kinsman redeemer and redeem you and your family. If he is willing to do this, good. But if he is not willing to fulfil his responsibility... Then, as the Eternal One lives, I promise I will redeem your family by marrying you. Now remain here until morning comes. So Ruth lay at his feet until early morning. Then she got up to leave while it was still dark, before she could be recognised by anyone, because Boaz realised no one should know the woman was on the threshing room floor. Now bring me the outer garment you are wearing. Hold it out and hold on tightly. She did so, and Boaz filled her garment with six measures of barley grain. He handed it to her, then he left her and went into the town to conduct his business. When Ruth returned to Naomi's home, her mother-in-law asked her daughter what happened. Ruth related all that Boaz had said and done. He even gave me these six measures of barley grain, saying to me, you can't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. And Naomi replied, now you must wait, daughter. We must wait and see what happens. Be at peace. That man will not rest today until this is resolved. 
Emily John now has a fun activity for the children. So, in this week's lesson, we've learned of a friendship between Ruth and Boaz. This got me thinking about our family and our friends. What does make a good friend? Is it their loyalty? Having their best interests at heart? Being loving, caring, kind? Maybe learning from each other? Friendship is one of God's most precious gifts given to us. Let's make a folding friendship craft stick. For this you will need six lollipop sticks. You'll need some paint, masking tape and some markers. Now, first thing we need to do is get your sticks in pairs and stick them together with the masking tape. Masking tape is like God's eternal love for us. He makes us safe and secure and we can all stick together and share God's love. Once you've stuck those together, put them all one way and turn them around. Now, the sides that are not stuck, we need to stick those together. Again, with our masking tape. And now, we'll all be stuck together in God's love. And we can all be French together. See? So now this is your folding friendship stick. Stuck together with God's love. But it's not finished. Once you've done that, you need to paint your sticks. Both sides and then let it dry with it open out. Now it's all stuck together and painted, we can now decorate it. On mine, I've decorated it with friendship. Trust is respect and love. That's what I think friendship is. And on this side, I've got friends stick together. Because I think we always stick together, friends. When you've decorated it, put it all together. And then you can get a piece of ribbon. And you can tie it around, almost like God giving us a big hug and again, keeping us all safe and secure. God likes to keep us safe and he likes us to our friends. There we go. And you can even, if you've got a little label, put a little label on there as well. And this you can pass on to your friends. Passing on the gift of love. Passing on God's love to everybody. We can share God's love with others. Try and make one and pass it on to your friends. If you do make one, you can post your photos on our Twitter feed, our Facebook or our YouTube channel. It'll be great to see them. Give it a go. Today's message is given by Robin Sherwood. Uh, the phrase I want to keep in your mind is uh, Inter Pondrans subtle plan for the righteousness of things. The question which chapter 3 answers What does it truly mean to be God focused? And we have a God focused man here. Boaz is a God focused man, dependent on God, doing the right thing. We have a young lady, and we have a God. We have a God exalting who around his glory to those under his control. The answer is that they manifest a strategic righteousness. It's a full commitment to do the right thing. No matter what befalls, no matter where we can be taken away from doing the right things. And the answer in this strategy, there is a righteousness which simply banishes evil strategic righteousness taking the initiative and dreams on how we can and do try to make things right one of the lessons we learn from ruth chapter three is that hope helps us dream hope helps us think up 
ways to be good. Help helps us pursue our ventures with virtue and integrity. It's hopelessness that makes people think that they have to lie, they have to steal <coughs> for selfish means. I think the two things that stand out in Naomi's strategy, in her plan if you like, and that she, one, she has a plan, and that she knows what the plan is. Naomi has a strategy and teach, that teaches us everything. We need to have a plan. All through the virus, we've needed to have a plan. Open our church to a plan. Care for all our people with a plan. And to direct people to a plan to keep each other safe. Of course, the Almighty <coughs> can <coughs> does <coughs> respond to us <coughs> in also wonderful ways. But of course, we do get sometimes depressed. One of the terrible effects of depression, which many experience, is the inability to move purposely and hopefully into the future. Strategies of righteousness are overflowed and the hope is gone. When Naomi awakens to the kindness of God, her hope becomes alive and overflowing with what she can possibly do. One of the reasons we help each other, our hope in God, we read in Psalm 42, it is that hopeful and hopeful plan that we strategically plan, that we look forward. Churches <coughs> that feel that there's no hope, that it's just maintaining what they've got. They haven't got a plan moving forward. That's where we can be despairing. So we need hope. We need the challenge. We need to meet the challenge. And God will supply us all that we need to move our churches forward. I must say, Naomi, as Baldrick would say in Blackadder, I have a cunning plan. And of course she did have a cunning plan. She took the initiative to find a husband for Ruth. Boaz, good man, a perfect suitor for being Ruth's husband. History, family name, inheritance, all of those things, the Hebrew way. So Naomi tells Ruth to make herself clean, attractive as possible. Of course, then there was uh, no Chanel number no. five around. But back then, of course, it was a case of getting clean, getting washed and off you go. And she went <coughs> to the thrashing floor <coughs> where Boaz was. And after he had gone to bed <laughs> and lay down, she snuck in. Lay by his cloak and lay down by his feet. So what was Naomi's motive? One thing is clear, that it was the right motive to do the right thing. Ruth tells Boaz why she had come. She wasn't sneaking in. She was laying at his feet and he asked the question, who are you, who are you, who are you? I'm Ruth, your maid servant. Spread your skirt over the maidservant, for you are next of kin. She went <coughs> willingly. She takes a place alongside him. When we think of those words that we also read in this chapter 3, that under the wings of God, when Ruth said, spread your skirt over me, the word skirt in the Hebrew word is wing. This word used in other places. God's great agent was taking refuge under the wings of God. So here's something I think we need to get from chapter 3. And as Ruth was told Naomi about the things and words about Boaz, and the more we ponder them, the more we become convinced that they are laden with subtle, loving <laughs> intentions, right loving intentions. Imagine how fast her pulse was racing when Boaz awoke. He was significantly older, a middle-aged man in love 
with a young widow. We so often see news headlines, don't we? A man of a certain age is with a lady of 20 or 30 years younger, and we all may have our incorrect ideas of that. Love is precious, and love affects people in different ways. And the pure love that Ruth shows to Boaz, it wasn't rude, as we read in Corinthians, it wasn't rude, it wasn't boastful, it was love. It comes the word of magnificent righteousness and self-control. He says, according to custom, Ruth, there is an, another who has prior claim to you, he says, and I won't be able to proceed until things are truly settled with him. He, again, he was a righteous man, knowing what he should do, knowing how he should go about doing the right things. So, he loves her. She loves him. They are alone. Nothing happens. Let's listen to the mood of the world today then. If it feels good, go and do it. Doesn't matter, just, just go and do it. But I say to you, I say to myself, if the stars are shining in their beauty, and when we are safe in the privacy of our own place, let us stop. Let us think righteousness. Let the morning dawn on your purity. Don't be like the world. Be like Boaz. Be like Ruth. Profoundly in love. Subtle and perceptive in communication. The power of self-control above all. Be committed to the righteousness of God. All praise be to him. Amen. Claire Roberts will now lead us in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you now in prayer. We pray for your worldwide church, asking especially for your blessings, as we, your people, continue to find new ways to worship together in safety in the new normal brought about by the pandemic. We pray for those in care homes who are missing visits from their families. Some have been apart for many months and are struggling with the loneliness. We thank you that vaccines seem to be coming ever closer and we pray for those who are working tirelessly to make the dream of not only being able to see our loved ones soon but also to be able to help them a reality. We remember the places we live and work. Even now, in this period when it's harder to interact socially face to face, we ask your blessings on our efforts to care for those in need. We remember in our prayers those who are in poor physical and mental health and give thanks to those who look after them. And we pray for ourselves. As we head toward Advent, that season of hope, we trust that you are with us, leading us from the darkness into the light of a new world. Amen. For the final hymn, I've chosen one of the great hymns of faith, Abide With Me. It seems apt for these times. It doesn't matter how dark things seem, or how strange a familiar world has become. God will be with us. And as it says in verse 2, Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us always. Amen.